I'll start this thing off. Hey, you guys. You remember I promised you Leonard Jones? Well, here he is. I got him. There's the man. So I'm going to interview him for a minute and ask him some spontaneous questions. I'm giving you guys a lot of broadcast today. It wasn't, I'm not trying to invade your space. I've just been, maybe I was in Holland too long. Um, Leonard, thank you so much. Now, how many instruments do you actually play? Because you're like my favorite, most inspiring um, Tabernacle of David prophetic worship leader. I think I probably around 20 different 20 instruments. different instruments yeah dang you're like Mo you're beyond mozart in the spirit so you went through different phases we're talking about music right mm -hmm. so like i love listening to different seasons of your music and uh the one that you know i first got that really just flipped my switch and i thought why is this crazy is the is the militant stage in your in your <laughs> your, your uh, worship career and it was an I surround you with my pre, you know, with my with, with my praises, with my praises, exalting you on every, every side. side. You push so hard, you just can't take it. You have to come and be glorified. <laughs> <laughs> what lyrics, man? So, what's the story behind that? Like, where was that? What was going on? I was just one of those, you know. Sometimes you you start into a worship service and and everybody's like, you know, uh, well, whatever, and, you know, and I I and that. Part of my life, I was going. No, he is going to show up. He has to. Wow, show up. not like an order. No, right. But your but your 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 disposition was yeah. so set on seeking and finding. Yeah. Well, when he when it says that we can go boldly into the throne right. room now, we don't have to. We forget about tomorrow. Forget about yesterday. Yeah, and uh, and just go boldly. You know, and that, you know. Sometimes I think I've changed my opinion sometimes now, but back then, <laughs> back then, you yeah, back then was like, no, he's going to come. And he always does. So. Well, yeah, man. And so, and so, um, was that whole album birthed out of that season of you, of you just going after uh, the Lord? Yeah. The album's called battleground and it's, it's a, it, it is a, you know, worship. Cause you were singing when I walked in today, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Isn't that on that album? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Oh my, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it's just one of those uh, things where um, if you've ever been involved in worship ministry, you know, people don't realize how much warfare is involved in that, you know, and it can be, it can be as much as the sound, the sound that's going on. It can be, you know, musicians that have not really been, act, you know, can you imagine a soldier going into battle? And having not trained and having not really practiced on his okay, on his... so so literally for you when you're in that realm, that fine-tuned realm of the presence, right. and if you've got team members that are out of sorts, you sense it. Oh yeah, because they're hitting wrong notes. Oh, you know? okay, and wrong notes is it's just like shooting at the enemy and missing the enemy. Right, you I know? got you. It's the same thing. Dang, you know, and so that's why I, I put a I do a worship school. Matter of fact. Uh, that's what I'm going to meet with Rick Joyner today about. Uh, well, tell people about the worship school because this is like gold. I don't think people realize what's available in the earth today. Well, and at the end of August, we're going into a full-time worship school uh, at Morningstar. You talk right into that. And what we're going to do is we're going to train people to play their instruments. We're going to train people to write. We're going to train people to hear God on the fly. You know, and the only way you can do that is through uh, work. Wow. It doesn't. They, but, but it's also work with, in, with a master that has an anointing for impartation. I mean, it's like the sons of Asaph working with you. Well, yeah, we, you know, it's not a school for everybody. It's not for beginners. It's actually, it's more like a special forces. Okay. We're not, we are literally not trying to raise up an army of worship. Well, how long is it? It's two years. Two years. Yeah. So they got to take two years of their life. They don't have to. No, but I mean, they're going. They're going if they want to do the deal. Yeah. If they want to do one semester, which is sixteen weeks, they can do that. Like, what will the first semester be on? Well, it will always. We always teach pretty much the same thing in the beginning, which is your basic theory, your right. ear training, ensemble. Uh, you know, uh, what does the Bible say about worship? That sort of thing, uh, right. and mainly just a lot of playing. You know, because uh, I think I told you before when uh, I used to travel with Phil Driscoll a lot when he got saved. Oh, at, I didn't know that. Okay. He got saved at my church, and he um, he never taught me anything about worship, but I learned everything about worship from him. How's that? Just watching him. 
just playing with him, you know, and, and, and seeing how, I mean, he'd just pick up the trumpet, blow a couple of notes, and the Holy Spirit would come. And I'm going, how does this happen? You know, and it happened because of all the years and hours that he was playing when nobody could hear him. And that's wow. when, see, the people, when people come in, I mean, a lot of, a lot of our um, past students are pretty famous now, like John Mark McMillan and, and Johnny Helser and, and Kim Walker and a whole bunch of them. Well, Kim came, Walker too, right? Yeah, okay. She came through one semester of our school. And Dang. That's, that's all she needed. <laughs> people, you got to get there. 16 weeks, man. If I was a youngster, I'd be doing this thing. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an awesome school. Dang. Um, so, um, do you, do you, you must, you guys must have some great spontaneous music that are being produced a lot of yeah, times. All the, that, time. Yeah. all the time, huh? Yeah. How do you know what to work on for an album and what to just say, well, that was great, but let it go. We can't do it all. Well, like in the, the class just finished yesterday and every morning we would just open up the Bible and start singing. Wow. You know, uh, and, uh, I, I would have, I'd write out be, early morning I would sit down and I, I can hear chord changes in my head which is I that's one of the things we teach is ear training how you hear so you can hear like uh, Beethoven was able to write a symphony while he was deaf because he could hear the notes wow. in his head and everybody can do that and, but it takes training so when I sit in the morning I would just write out these chord changes in my head and then I would bring them in and I'd say okay we're gonna play this chord change sing any scripture you want over this and uh, songs would just be birthed just like that, you know. I mean, they sounded like, like you know. Wow. So yeah. Was, now those we didn't record. Then. Now there, is is it possible people could have a gift for great songs, but they're not really a great musician, and that like they'd sit down at a keyboard like I'm a I'm a mediocre keyboard player, mm -hmm. and I used to lead worship. When <clears throat> I used to lead worship, I was better than I am now. But now I obviously I make a living talking all the time. Nobody wants necessarily to me to play a song but i look at uh, sabbatical i look at taking like a, i look at this as time up and saying you know what if i did a sabbatical rather than just a nothing sabbatical which is the best one mm -hmm. i would just shift gears and get into something like worship that would be a really cool thing to go to and then just oh, break yeah. the keyboard out again and say i'm now an older man worshiping like david before the lord but i get music and i'm thinking gee i wonder uh i wonder if it's possible to hear songs in your head and then have to just kind of plunk it out. But you maybe don't know the theory. You have to work with somebody else to get to write it out. Mm -hmm. But is that is that how people can also get music? Or do you find that you can hear music without playing it? I'm playing music in my head right now. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you, oh, no. you can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what was right? What happened? Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's totally possible. Oh, yeah. You wake up with the melody, and you have the melody, and then you go find a way to just capture it. Yeah, well, you te what I teach how people is how to hear a note in your head and know where it is on your instrument. Hear a chord in your head and know what chord that is. Gosh. So that... But you're doing that on stringed instruments. You can do it on anything, piano or any anything like that. I mean, that's how, you know, uh, by the time Beethoven wrote his fifth symphony, I believe, he was deaf. You know, no so, kidding. So he heard in his in his head, dun, 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 dun. you know, he could hear those notes. Dang, that's that's powerful. Well, for uh, you know, we were talking about that idea I gave you guys earlier about the music, and uh, so Leonard, what are we gonna do with this? I'm gonna do some meditation. What what do you think would be the best um, sample of your artistry for a backdrop for me to do some meditation on the Seven Mountains? Um, I think the one of my uh, the violin CD that I put out called uh, Deep Waters. That's, okay, that's a great one. And how we did that was uh, I went up into the to Don, with Don Potter into his studio, right. and me and a guy named um, Bruce Daly. He played the piano. He got in one room, and I got in the other room, and we said, "Okay, hit record." And uh, he got in what does that mean? One room and you got in the well, other room. you know, he's di different. He got into the where the piano is. I went into oh, oh but you could hear each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, of course. With, I was gonna say, well, that's, that's way too much. That'd be a real miracle <laughs> yeah, if you're both hearing the screen. Uh, and so he would just he just would play a chord, and over that chord, I would immediately hear a melody. Oh, wow, you know, and because of, my, because of my training, I knew where to go. 
I knew what note that That's was. That's the secret there. In my head. I knew what key he was in. I knew what chord he was on. And um, and so we did that. That was the first one we did. Uh, we've done five CDs like that. Uh, and which if you want to do five of those. Things well, we'll start with one. We'll, start with we'll one. get it going. It could be our new thing. And then we just we just uh, played and, and uh, just would close my eyes and just just um, imagine, which was the truth, that Jesus was right there and I was playing to him. And um, and we would do like, you know, seven or eight minutes of that. And there, it, it was weird. It, it had it had a form, just like a symphony has form. You have, yeah. You know, you have your introduction, you know, and then you have your second motif and your third motif and stuff. And then you have a recapitulation and then you have, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, it, it was the same thing. Like we'd, we'd finish and we'd go, man, it, it's like somebody wrote that. Wow. You know, I mean, it was all just out of our head, you know, just out of just trying, just opening ourselves up. Now, people wanted to get it. How, where, how would they order it just right now if they wanted uh, to get that? They can go to Leonard Jones Music. Leonard Jones Music dot. Uh, I think it's dot com. Dot com. And look for. Deep Waters. Deep Waters. And I'm going to work on that deep waters myself, and we'll come up with something which would be a meditation. So you guys are going to love it. Yep. So thank you, Leonard. Anything else you want to say? Just real, real quick, Tabernacle of David. Give me a couple of crazy, interesting ideas about the tabernacle. When, when the Bible talks about, I will re rebuild again the Tabernacle of David, I keep thinking it's talking, in the book of Acts, it's talking about a radical alternative environment for the way people gather around seeking God, which the first century church had to have in a way, because mm -hmm. they were psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. They were so pregnant with activity that was supernatural. Right. And I don't see that happening a lot. So what are some thoughts you've got on the Tabernacle of David in a modern context? Uh, it's going to take a leader like David, you know, who is, who actually, you know, David monetized that. You huh. know, that wasn't just like, Oh, let's let's do twenty four hour worship somewhere. You know, I right. mean, he had uh, up to thirty thousand people on salary doing that. I see. And those people were trained. I mean, they they could, on the drop of a hat, prophesy on their instrument. Wow. You know, and yes, uh, yes. And so I, I believe what's going when you find when something happens and and the church eventually you know comes into. Um, into where it's supposed to be, right? Uh, it'll be monetized, and you'll. And he didn't just hire a bunch of people that wanted to be musicians. Right. He, he hired people that were just great musicians. Right. You know, and I like the people that play on our CDs. They're great musicians. Right. And that's that's what happened. You know, that's what that's why the Tabernacle of David occurred, because of David. Right. And and that's the only thing out of the Old Testament that God says He's going to rebuild. Interesting idea. No temple. Wow. I love it. You're the best. Okay, folks, that was a rare gem, getting a hold of this guy, and I'm going to do this project with him, and you're going to love it when we do it. But I'm already late. It's 1221. I was supposed to be at the uh, lunch engagement speaking at 12 o'clock. So I'm late, too. <laughs> uh, we're both in trouble. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.